Good morning friends, in today's video we are going to discuss about Sandra Plover sizing, its construction requirement and also AMCA code requirement. In design point of view, pressure drop of Sandra Plover should be low to limit the external static pressure or ESP. If the pressure drop of lower is high, ESP will be high and also equipment motor size will go high. Coming to construction point of view, a quality engineer or a site engineer verifies some of the points as mentioned here during the selection based on the project specification requirements. The Sandra Plover frame and blade is made of extruded aluminium section or GA sheet with different thickness like 1.2, 1.3, 1.5 or 2 mm thick sheet based on the local code or specification requirement. It is composed of two sets of inverted U channel like you see here. This type of inverted U-channel will be present, mounted vertically on two opposite rows. The Sandra Plover is used at the fresh air inlet like FHU. It is designed to separate large size sand particles at low to medium speed. It can be fitted with a bad or insert screen mesh. It can be either GI insert screen or aluminium or stainless steel wire mesh or filter with varying thickness like 1 inch or 2 inch. Normally the aluminium washable filter with the frame is secured behind the lower blades with the clip angle and bolt. For filter maintenance we can simply unscrew the bolt to allow the filters and frame to come away from the lower. The Sandra Plover is a self-emptying system. It has, it has a sets of holes at the bottom of the casing like you see here. Like you see here the holes like it can be 15 mm or 20 mm or 25 mm diameter self-drain holes to discharge separated sand particles. So, uh, for the example, an FHU or fresh air handling unit needs fresh air at 120 per liter, 1200 liter per second or 2543 CFM. So, there is a separate fresh air handling unit uh, and near to that, there is a FHU duct is there and end of the FHU duct, fresh air duct, there is a sand drop lower which allows the fresh air to enter into the FHU unit. So, we need to see what is the important thing here. Uh, the first one is like a free area. The free area of the sand drop lower is defined as a total sand drop lower face area. That means you can see here the A and B as I shown here in the drawing. A and B. This is the total face area of the uh, sand drop lower. And from here we need to minus the flats and brame. Flats and brame area. That means the inside we have the flats and brame. So we need to minus that uh, from the total area. So to get the free area and the higher free area will allow more sand penetration and lower free area will become an unwanted restriction to air flow. So the formula here is free air face area in square feet is equal to air flow in CFM divided by free area velocity in feet per minute and the free area velocity is equal to 1 meter per second or 197 CFM. So we need to know how this 1 meter per second comes from, from where it comes from. So for that we have to look into the AMCA standard requirements, standard testing requirements. So, AMCA, AMCA is the Air Movement and Control Association which performs five different type of tests for the lowers and the different test requirements and uh, its laboratory arrangement I explained in my last video that is fresh air lower sizing. Please watch that video. I have given the link in the description. And AMCA testing requirement for the wind driven sand test. This is one of the important tests for the sand drop lower. So, when air is taken via sand drop lower, it can block the sand drop lower. For this reason, the university edition of uh, AM, ANSI AMC standard 500L is a, has a testing pro protocol for wind driven sand. It was adopted in December of 2015 and this test measure the lower ability to resist the sand. So this test introduced the dry sand particles at different air flow rate to the lower under test through a sand injected blower while the pressure drop is also documented. Okay, so in one test we can measure the pressure drop value. So the different at different flow rate, the sand will be thrown over the lower with the with the help of the aid with the uh, with the help of the fan. So at this moment we can monitor the pressure drop as well as the sand rejection performance. The test size used for the sand drop lower is 1 to 20 mm into 1 to 20 mm. Similar to sand drop lower, fresh air lower and the excess lower, the same type of the same size of the sample is collected and it is tested. During the testing, the free area velocity is observed and recorded at every 20 second interval. Okay, so what, what will happen? Suppose we have the sand drop lower here. 
for the testing and uh, we initially we will measure how much amount of sand is uh, blown into the blown on the lower for example you are going to blow you are going to blow 5 gram of sand so once this once the setup is ready and if you inject the sand there the they will use the excess fan and the sand injector blower it will run for continuously 2 minutes okay once the sand is um, the sand that is prevented from egressing past of the lower is collected by a vacuum cleaner and the difference between the how much amount of sand is blow, uh, coming out from here and how much amount of uh, means how much am, uh, amount of sand is uh, uh, dropped here the difference between these two will be measured and based on that the uh, sand uh, ejection performance will be uh, monitored so like you see here there are four grades they have given class a b c d class a mean 90 to 100 uh, effective 80 to 189.9 effective for class b and uh, 70 to 79.9 for class c and low anything lower than that on 70 percentage will be uh, coming into the class d the testing is done at different free area velocity like a mentioned blow you can see the drawn velocity 1 meter per second 2.5 4 meter per second 5.5 and 7 meter per second based on the drawn velocity the sand rejection effectiveness like you see in this graph in the x direction free area velocity and y direction sand rejection effectiveness for example 1 meter per second it is here so 1 meter per second how much sand rejection effectiveness and similar to different points at 2.5 and 4 and 5.5 uh, so like this it will be uh, documented in the uh, during the testing time and the sand is blown on lower with 20 to 25 meter per second in the injection uh, graph and here the important thing is based on this data the recommended draw velocity 1 meter per second draw velocity is the maximum used when sizing up so that is the reason mostly because uh, after this 1 meter per second the manufacturer band is 80 percent effective at 1 meter per second draw velocity so different manufacturer has different uh, sand effect rejection effectiveness mostly in the project specification they will they will mention clearly minimum this much percentage of sand rejection effectiveness required for the product based on that we will select the product and coming to the drawn velocity at 1 meter per second it has the maximum uh, high performance so that is the reason we go with uh, always 1 meter per second selection so here the free area velocity I consider 1 meter per second or 197 feet per minute and uh, coming to the calculation free area in square feet is equal to 2543 CFM in our case as I told you 1200 liter per second or 2543 CFM and divided by the divided by the free area velocity that is 197 so finally we will get the answer in square feet 1 uh, 12.9 because the unit here is you can see uh, cubic feet per minute and feet per minute so that is the reason the answer we will get in square feet only and we need to convert this one to square meter right you can just google it to convert this one to square meter and uh, because the table here we need the, we are getting the answer in square meter and you can see in this table the answer here in the x direction they have given in height in mm in y direction they have given width in mm and uh, for in our case we need uh, 1.2 square meter and uh, coming to the lowest category 0 0.47 0 0.66 you cannot get 1.22 so so this is the initial point uh, you can see it is more than 1.22 and after that uh, based on the site condition you can adjust the height and width for example you can go with uh, this one because it is more than uh, this is uh, more than 1.22 and you, you can go with this selection 1.24 and also you can go with 1.25 so different uh, height and width you can adjust based on the site arrangement and so the selected sand drop power for this case I go with 3920 and 1070 that is from here 3920 and 1 0 mm and if you convert this one to meter 3.92 meter into 1.07 so finally the area of the sand drop lower in our case for the 1200 liter per second is 4.19 meter square and after the sand rejection uh, effectiveness there is one very important thing you have to consider during the selection that is the pressure drop so coming to the pressure drop for the same size for example 1000 by 1000 sand drop lower for the same size a different manufacturer will come with a different uh, pressure drop but it is very good engineering practice that uh, the pressure drop of the sand drop lower should not exceed 50 pascal so we have to select the sand drop lower lower than this one like a 50 pascal lower than 50 pascal and also we need to consider the sand rejection effectiveness for the selection of the sand drop lower so thank you for watching the video if you have any comment please add your comment in the comment section we will meet again with an another interesting topic